CircuitPython is code plus community. And to me, that means the Python on microcontrollers newsletter. So here is, if you head to adafruitdaily.com, you can subscribe to our Python on microcontrollers newsletter and get all the latest info, all the latest news each week. Uh, it's delivered for free into your mailbox, very low effort. Uh, you can cancel at any time. We promise not to spam you. All you need to do is head to adafruitdaily, sorry, adafruitdaily.com, uh, put in your email address and sign up. Uh, and the newsletter is also accessible just as a web page here at adafruit.daily, sorry, at adafruitdaily.com. Uh, you can click on a link that gives you the latest of the um, Python on microcontrollers uh, newsletter. And I want to talk about a few of the items that caught my eye this week. One is the uh, CircuitPython 8.0.0 Beta 6 has been released. Uh, and some of the uh, interesting things that come with this release uh, are uh, mentioned in here, including some... Uh, switches over to the .toml, settings.toml file from the .env. Um, so you can check that and head out to the blog or the GitHub from these links to find out more. Uh, another interesting one, this is actually sort of the road to this being in Python. Uh, Tiny USB has added Bitbang USB host support for RP2040. Uh, and while this is running just in Arduino right now, the hope is, is that this will find its way onto Python soon. And uh, this will include, uh, hopefully, right now I think there's uh, serial and mass storage uh, host capabilities, but hopefully this will also move into some of the other things like USB, HID, um, MIDI, and other things like that. So that's a, just a, a glimpse on the timeline to adding some of this USB host support to RP2040, which is really cool. Uh, there aren't too many microcontrollers out there that allow you to do both a USB uh, a, uh, side and a USB host side, uh, client and host side. TNC 3.6 and TNC 4.0 are the only two I've done it with before. Uh, and those are really hard to find now, so I'd love to have something else that you could plug in a MIDI keyboard or a mouse or whatever you want and still be able to output on the other side. So um, could be really cool. Uh, there's also a link here to head to uh, the Adafruit blog to check out a post from Scott on the uh, upcoming 2023 plans for CircuitPython, and we'll be doing more posts uh, about that, about our plans, and looking for people's uh, both annual wrap-up and, and for people's uh, predictions and hopes for the coming year. Uh, there was also a story in here about... Uh, Raspberry Pi Foundations uh, saying there probably won't be a Raspberry Pi 5 coming in 2023. They're going to be doing some catch up on manufacturing and getting, uh, getting some devices out there uh, of existing Pi boards before they move into the Pi 5. So uh, you can click on that link to go to the Tom's Hardware article. There's also an interview here with Evan Upton uh, that you can go and check out from the law, uh, blog or over on YouTube. A story here about ESP32 GitHub updates are available over the air with MicroPython and MicroGit. So this is something that would allow uh, you to keep an ESP32 device in sync. Excuse me, I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> wow, that was a good one. Pardon me. <laughs> it's right into the microphone, too, so I probably could have covered that. Sorry about that. Man, that was some sneeze. Uh, so this will allow you to keep your ESP32 devices in sync with a GitHub repository over the air, which is uh, pretty interesting. It allows you to clone an entire MicroPython repo uh, onto a MicroPython microcontroller. Uh, then there were some projects here that caught my eye. There was a really neat looking uh, sort of telepresence remote articulated robot hand project here. Uh, this was programmed in MicroPython and uses some of the Adafruit Flex sensors. Uh, if you look at the GIF there, I don't know if that'll play. Uh, probably, oops, now I've done it. Let me go back. I don't want to go there. Uh, probably is playing at a sort of a limited frame rate, but you can see there, there are three or four Flex sensors on a uh, finger-mounted controller, and then there's a robotic hand in the background that's uh, moving to, to keep pace with the with the flexing of the fingers, which is pretty cool. Uh, and that's using ASP32 
uh, as, the, as the microcontroller on there. Uh, some other items that I thought were cool, there was a 3D printed hot air balloon uh, from Geek Mom, I think, right? Yeah, and this uses uh, a little NeoPixel ring, a Zhao ESP32 C3. It has a um, web workflow uh, uh, using the web IDE, and it also has some really cool looking light pipes on there that, uh, that illuminate. You can follow the link there to Mastodon to find out more. Uh, and then there was also a little section in here on some uh, new boards that are out that support CircuitPython. And uh, you can scroll through all these cool uh, projects here, other Python projects, some new products that are CircuitPython capable. Uh, here's the link, uh, or the list, and then a bunch of links to Looks like about a dozen new boards that support CircuitPython, so you can go check that out. Uh, and that is the Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. So go check that out at adafruitdaily.com.